This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a gas oven that is not getting hot and this will be a very easy repair to do. I want to make sure you have it unplugged. Just pull out the racks that come right out and you could remove the door too. On this model, the door is kind of hard to remove, so I'll just keep it in position. I'm gonna remove these two screws in the back of this lower panel, and then I'm gonna lift up the back of the panel to about 45 degrees, and then I'll kind of wiggle out the front lip to get that bottom panel out of the way. This is a heat deflector. I'm gonna remove it by taking out two Phillips head screws here in the front. And push the unit or pull the unit toward me and then lift up to take it out turn on the oven I'm staring at the igniter and it should start to glow in about 10 seconds and I'm not getting any glow when I turned the dial up at the um, thermostat I could hear a click so I'm pretty sure it's getting power but there's no glow, so it's most likely due to a bad igniter. They usually last about four or five years. So I'm going to take off this old igniter. I'm just using a socket to remove the two little bolts that hold it on. You may want to put a little oil on the threads of the bolt so they can come out easier because once you get heated a lot in the oven get kind of corroded and it's hard for them to get out so oil helps so I got that off just taking a look at the old igniter and you can't really tell by looking at it if there's anything wrong here's a new one this is a Electrolux Frigidaire get these from Amazon for about 25 bucks we'll put a um, link in the description below so I'm just going to put it in position and then tighten up that little bolt that holds it on And we'll put in the second bolt. Okay, here's the wire connector, and I'm using um, the ceramic wire nuts. I'm just taking them off, and then I'm going to pull this igniter free from the uh, wires that bring power to it. Now here's the new igniter with the wire assembly from the oven. I'm going to put the wires together and then tighten them with the ceramic wire nuts. The ceramic wire nuts come with the, um, the new igniter. And you can hook either one of the oven wires up with either one of the igniter wires. There's no polarity problem. A lot of times when you uh, go to do the igniter replacement, you actually have to cut the wire that goes from the oven to the igniter. In this case, this igniter had been replaced before, so it already had some wire nuts to make it even easier. So I'm going to put the power connector back together again, the harness, click it in nice and tight. I'm going to tug away the wires. And then we give it a little test, plug it back in, turn it on, and we get a glow almost instantly. It gets brighter and brighter. And then at a certain point, after about 30 seconds, you should get a nice blue flame. What happens is finally the safety valve will let the gas flow in when it's hot enough to ignite it. So it looks really good. We have nice blue flame, a little yellow tinge is okay. If you have a mainly yellow flame, that wouldn't be good. You have to change the air-fuel mixture, but this looks good. You can feel the heat coming up. So I'll go ahead and turn it off. And then I'll let it 
fully turn off. The, it takes a few seconds for the flame to go away. We'll turn it back on again to make sure that it really is going to work consistently. I'm just going to let it cool down. So there's the igniter. It gets hot. The safety valve lets the gas come in. And the gas flows in and then ignites almost like a, like a match. So I'll go ahead and turn it on again. And then I heard it click, and then within just a few seconds, it starts glowing. It's brighter and brighter, and then it'll ignite the gas. So I'll turn it off, let it cool, and then we'll just put it back together. Here's the heat deflector. You go ahead and put these front tabs in first. Come in at an angle. I'll set the back ones in position and then push those tabs into the firewall, the back panel. And then I'll put the two Phillips head screws in to hold it. There we go. We add in the lower panel. So I'll come in at a diagonal, get the front lip to fit underneath, put the back part down, and then I'll push those two long Phillips head screws back in and then spin those in to hold it. You don't have to have those really tight, but it's just there, they're just there to keep that panel down. All right, that looks good. We'll put the racks back in. And then I like to set it for 350 degrees and just make sure it can get up to temperature. And then I know, no, I got it for sure. Go ahead and close that and set that for a 350. Customer mentioned the burners are acting up, so I'm going to lift the front panel, a uh, top panel up, and lock it into position. And then I'm going to take out a screw and pull off this burner and see if I can see what's going on. There was flame coming out of the bottom of the burner, so I think there's some corrosion where the um, seam is. I'm going to use my owl tool to poke into the holes to make sure the flame can come out easily. I'm going to put this back in, test it again. That's where the screw goes to hold it. Turn it on. Yeah, I can see a little flame coming out of the bottom. And you can actually hear it. It has a different sound than the other burners. There's the flame coming out the top and the bottom. So let that cool for a little bit. Take it out. And now I'm going to crimp it with some channel locks. Just really gently because it's aluminum. It bends very easily. I just want to push it in so it's a little bit tighter seal. Probably this one actually needs a new burner assembly, which is pretty cheap, but this will make it better until they can replace it. So put it back in, turn it on, and now we have a little less flame there at the bottom, which is good. I'm going to put that screw back in to hold it. Go and lower these two pieces. I 
There we go. We'll put the greats back on. And the oven did great. It got up to 350 degrees. It took about 15 minutes, I think, all together. And we're all done, so thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate your support. And when you get a chance, please press the subscribe button below so you can be subscribed and also the notification bell so we can send you more videos about appliance repair. Please also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you really liked the video and it really helped you, please press this new applaud button and you can show your support and also get a nice clapping hands for your video. Thanks again.